Today, we examine why John Shire should succeed when he takes over at Duke. If you haven't yet, please share and subscribe to help grow the channel, and I hope you enjoy the video. Today's video is powered by SeatGeek. Get $20 off any tickets sold using promo code AntWright on the SeatGeek app or website. Go back and look at these successful programs who have established a winning culture who are on top. The fans have this feeling where this could possibly end, but it's not going to end anytime soon. No way. But it happens all the time in football and basketball. Legends don't coach forever, whether it's John Wooden at UCLA, Pat Summit at Tennessee, or the controversial yet legendary figure Bobby Knight at Indiana. Look at Ohio State football. Urban Meyer wins a national championship, goes on to win two straight Big Ten titles, and before the Rose Bowl, he announces his retirement and names Ryan Day his successor. Not only did Day grab the reins, he took Ohio State to another level. He's never lost a conference game, and his only two losses have come in the college football playoff. And the recruiting has also stayed elite, if not better. When it comes to basketball, I've checked examples of coaches leaving the keys to a successful program, wanted to see which schools dropped off, and it turns out there aren't that many. Whenever a program is in good standing, the following coach usually does well. And these aren't even coaches who have come up within the program. These are external hires from elsewhere. One of the rare occurrences would be Jerry Tarkanian in 1991. He said the 91-92 season would be his last. He was replaced and UNLV didn't get back to the NCAA tournament for several years. Or look at UConn. Kevin Nolly won a national championship in year two, but there was no consistency contending for championships after that. It was recently announced that coach Mike Krzyzewski will be coaching his final season at Duke. He has tons of accolades. Among those, he has been inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame twice, once as an individual, the other four is part with the 1992 Dream Team. And he's been inducted to the College Basketball Hall of Fame too. He has five national championships and 12 Final Fours. In my opinion, you can't even argue the fact that Duke is a top three college basketball job and program. Between Duke, Kentucky, and North Carolina, you can argue all day about who's better. You can look at how Duke has grown over the last few decades, and when Coach K finally decides to step down, who will be the coach to take over? You would expect someone well-seasoned with years of head coaching experience. You have Tommy Amaker, who is now at Harvard, who got Seton Hall to a Sweet 16, and a Michigan team coming off of program-killing sanctions back to the postseason. Jeff Capel coached at VCU and got them to the tourney for the seventh time in their history, got Oklahoma to the Elite Eight, and currently coaches at Pitt. Johnny Dawkins coached at Stanford, bringing them their fifth Sweet 16, and now at UCF, was able to bring the school their first NCAA win ever. Chris Collins has been at Northwestern since 2013, bringing them not only their first tournament berth, but also their first win in their history. You also have Mike Bray, Bobby Hurley, Kenny Blakeney, Greg Paulus, Quinn Snyder, so many guys who have played or coached at Duke in the tree who would potentially love this job. Duke actually shocked everyone and went another route. They went young and they went fresh. John Shire was elected as the replacement starting in April 2022. He's been an assistant coach at Duke since 2014 and one of their better recruiters when bringing in talent like Jason Tatum and Cam Reddish. When K drops down, pay attention to the recruiting. Duke may have a disappointing season every now and then, but one thing is for sure, they pride themselves in recruiting. The last time Duke didn't bring in a top five recruiting class was 2013. The Duke name, or the brotherhood as they call it, is real. It's evident in the staff, and it will be evident once Coach K retires. Nolan Smith was an All-American at Duke and won a national championship there. Chris Carrawell, he was an All-American as well. Also had Duke, played in the Final Four, and I'm sure the next assistant to come up will have similar accolades. It's simple, you come in, you play the right way, be coachable, Duke will take care of you once your playing career is over. And even if there isn't a spot in the program, they'll find or create a spot within the athletic department or on campus. This pitch is constantly used to let recruits know that this is a family for life, and the proof is in the consistent makeup of the staff. 
the succession plan is a great idea. Despite Shire not having any head coaching experience, Kay has been grooming him over the last couple of years. Even if it's something small like talking with media during halftime or after the game, and I'm sure Kay will be giving John multiple days of practice planning, how to structure your days, what tasks need to be done, all with some training wheels. In this time, John can and should be more open about ideas because he'll need to not only take over for the program, but he still needs to add his own flavor. Only Coach K can be Coach K. John needs to be Coach John while using K's framework and what he's learned. And the support. Support is everything when taking over a new position. When you don't have the support of the administration or you have envious individuals on staff, it's so easy to get undercut and sabotaged, but everyone wants to see John win. This falls in with the whole brotherhood deal. This is a family of brothers and sisters who breathe and bleed Duke. They want their family to succeed because if one succeeds, they all succeed. Coach K is an icon. He always will be. I cannot iterate enough. Just look at these programs over history who have passed on a solidly built culture to the next person. Very rarely have I seen the next staff miss a beat. I just feel everything is set up for John to do very well at Duke. And I have Duke friends who were concerned about not going for an external guy. That's never been Duke's way of doing things. So why break now what's been working? And I feel the program is going to need the Duke community and the Cameron crazies more than ever. The more consistent the environment, the easier the transition for everyone. Can't guard me.